picture this, three o'clock in the morning, the phone rings, you've got this gut-wrenching feeling that it's bad news. You pick up the phone, fill in the blank. I want you to keep that in your mind as I read these um, two stories, and I want you to picture whatever would be the worst possible scenario, whether it be a phone call about you, your spouse, your kids, your family members, your friends, your job, your, your house, whatever it may be, and then I'll tie it all in at the end. So the first story is called Hospital Room. Two men, both seriously ill, occupy the same hospital room. One man was allowed to sit up in bed for an hour each afternoon to help drain the fluid from his lungs. His bed was next to the only window in the room. The other man had to spend all of his time flat on his back. The two men talked for hours on end. They spoke of their wives and families, homes and jobs, their involvement in the military service, where they had been on vacation, everything you can imagine. Every afternoon when the man in the bed next to the window could sit up, he would pass the time by by describing to his roommate all the things that he could see on the other side of the window. The man in the other bed began to live for that one hour period where his world would be brightened by all the activity and the color of the world outside. The window overlooked a park with a lovely lake. Ducks and swans played in the water while children sailed their model boats. Young lovers walked arm in arm amidst the flowers of every color, and a fine view of the city skyline was soon seen in the distance. As the man by the window described all the beautiful things that he saw in exquisite detail, the man on the other side of the room would close his eyes and imagine the very picturesque scene. One warm afternoon, the man by the window described a parade passing by. Although the other man could not hear the band, he could see it in his mind's eyes as the gentleman by the window portrayed it with descriptive words. Days and weeks had passed. One morning, the nurse arrived to bring water for their baths, only to find the lifeless body of the man by the window who had died peacefully in his sleep. She was sat in and called the hospital attendants to take away the body. As soon as it seemed appropriate, the other man asked if he could move next to the window. The nurse was happy to make the switch. She made sure he was comfortable and left him alone. Slowly and painfully, he propped himself up with one elbow to take his first look at the real world outside. He strained to slowly turn to look at the window beside the bed. It faced a blank wall. The man asked the nurse, what could possibly compel his deceased roommate who had described such wonderful things outside of this window? The nurse responded that the man was blind and could not even see the wall. Perhaps he just wanted to encourage you, she said. There is tremendous happiness in making others happy despite our own situations. Shared grief is half the sorrow, but happiness when shared is doubled. If you want to feel rich, just count all of the things that you have that money cannot buy and share it. Today is a gift. That's why it's called present. Okay, and then the next story I want to read to you is called Balloons. Once a group of 50 people were attending a seminar. Suddenly the speaker decided to do a group activity. He started giving each person a balloon and asked them to write his or her name on the balloon with a marker. Then all the balloons were collected and put into a different room. Now these delegates were let in that room and asked to find the balloon which had their name written on it within five minutes. Everyone was frantically searching for their name, colliding with each other, pushing each other. It was utter chaos. At the end of five minutes, no one found their balloon. Now, each person was asked to randomly collect a balloon and give it to the person whose name was written on it. Within five minutes, everyone had their balloon with their name on it. The speaker began, exactly, this is happening in our lives. Everyone is frantically looking for happiness, not knowing where it is. Our happiness lies in the happiness of others. Give them your happiness and you will get your happiness. This is the purpose of human life. I wanted to tie that into the story about three o'clock in the morning and you're getting the worst possible news. I'm not trying to say that it's not gonna be devastating. I know it's gonna be heartbreaking and it's gonna feel like you're in the middle of this 
hurricane storm and you don't know what's going on, you're probably going to be speechless for a moment. You're probably going to be like paralyzed and you can't move and you can't breathe and you don't know what to do. And you're just like, this is the worst possible thing I could ever imagine. Once you take a breath and you process what was just said to you and what was just told to you on the phone, the worst possible news, the way to help get through that is just like it said in these two stories. That man was blind. He didn't see the real world out there. He didn't even know there was a blank wall. But all these dreams and fantasies that he created in his head, he wanted to share that with the person next to him because he was saddened that he was blind, but he didn't want to focus on that. He wanted to focus on the beauty that the world has. And it made the other man look forward to that hour every day, even though it wasn't real. And the balloons, we are so ready to just grab at balloons and grab for this and grab for that and grab whatever can make us happy. But what we need to be doing is whatever's in front of us, why don't we grab that and look at it and share it with others or give it to the person it belongs to or help the person in need is I, what that story is trying to say. So all in all, what this boils down to is even in our most unfortunate grief in our most darkest circumstances it's hard to have that smile on your face and it's hard to get through the storm but one way that we can do it is not focus on that but focus on happiness of others and doing for others I know that a lot of times when I'm stressed out or I'm going through dark stuff that I try and concentrate on, you know, doing for my kids, doing for my family or doing for my neighbors or whatever. And it makes me feel better. And then I am not concentrating on my problem anymore. I'm happy because I'm making others happy. So I hope you have a great weekend and until next time, oh, I hope y'all stay safe.